ladies and gentlemen, Gary Moore. Just on my way to my job at the bank and thought I'd drop by and do a show. How about the best, huh? You know, when you think of uh, the world of ventriloquism, the four great names that come to your mind, to mine they are Edgar Bergen and Paul Winchell, uh, Senior Wences and Sherry Lewis. And we have, as our first contestant, somebody who's trying to follow in their footsteps and who I think is going to be very successful. Uh, but we'll have to wait for that. First, let's say hello to our highly vocal panel here on To Tell the Truth. Bill Cullen. <laughs> Peggy Cass. <laughs> Orson B. <laughs> and Kitty Carlisle. <laughs> Gracious, we are truly uh, foregathered. Yeah, look this at week that. we welcome back from the outer reaches of far-flung Miami <laughs> a man whose entire life is spent in the pursuit of truth, beauty, and the perfect paper airplane. Because <laughs> 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 you know, getting back to what we were talking about, I was talking about before ventriloquism, we haven't had a really new great ventriloquist come along since uh, oh Ed Sullivan. <laughs> I guess. Uh, yeah. uh, didn't, he used to do all of Alan King's routines. Mm -hmm. He's really ventriloquist. But right, maybe our luck is going to change. Let us now meet our ventriloquist. <laughs> Number one, what is your name, please? My name is Linda Phillips. Number two. My name is Linda Phillips. Number three. My name is Linda Phillips. It is not possible that two of those are fibbers, but two of them are. One of them is telling the truth. Let's hear about Linda Phillips. She says here, I, Linda Phillips, was in the third grade when I discovered that I had a gift for ventriloquism. You see, I was home in bed with a cold, and to amuse myself, I made a puppet from a paper bag. And lo and behold, I was able to talk without moving my lips. Since real ventriloquist dummies are too expensive, I designed Pipsqueak, a gray mouse with pink ears, and my mother made it for me. Pipsqueak and I have an act which includes comedy, singing, and flute playing. In the past, we have performed at department stores, state fairs, prisons, army camps, and on television. However, there is a real treat in store for Pipsqueak and me. We won a talented teens competition. And the prize is a three-week performing tour of Europe. Signed, Linda Phillips. <laughs> and we'll come back in just a second to find out about this thing. But first, uh, pay a few bills. Now, we're in the happy position of having three charming young ladies with us, all saying that they are Linda Phillips, girl ventriloquist. And uh, let's hear from what is easily the most interesting voice on our panel, Miss Peggy Cash. <laughs> Thank you very much, Gary. Uh, number three, who's Topo Giglio? He's on Ed Sullivan. But do you know what he is? Mouse. Huh. Did you, uh, number two, did you get your idea from that mouse on Ed Sullivan? No, I got my idea from Shari Lewis. Oh, that's right, she's a ventriloquist, right? Yes. What's the name, number one, what's the name of Shari Lewis's uh, puppet? Well, Lamb Chop is her most popular one. Uh, thank you. Number two, uh, who writes the comedy for your act? I do. Hot dog. And number three, uh, did you learn to play the flute specially for the mouse, or were you a flautist before? No, I learned in school. Uh -huh. And number one, uh, what kind of tunes do you do? You, you said you, the mouse sings. Well, we do popular tunes, and also sometimes we do religious music. And that takes us, please, to Orson Bean. Number one, what religion is the mouse? No, don't answer that. <laughs> Number one, uh, do you make up your own jokes or do you steal them? No, I do make them up. Do you really? I think that's wonderful. When I broke into show business, I stole everything. You betcha. <laughs> Without Victor Borger, I wouldn't be here today. Number three, uh, what is a glottal stop? Do you have any idea? 
sorry, I don't. No, I don't either. I just, just thought it was a good question. It was left over from another show. I didn't get a chance to ask it. Number two, uh, what is the, what's the weirdest experience you've had performing? Was it in the prison or where? In the prison. What was your response? Did they love you? Were they a great audience? They liked me. They acted like it was just wonderful to see someone different. Yeah, I've heard that about prison audiences. <laughs> Thank you, Austin. I'll talk to the police to Kitty Carlisle. <laughs> <laughs> I know who that is. That's you. <laughs> You're not talented for this. I'm, you. <laughs> I'm delighted to ask these questions because I've always wanted to know. Number three, uh, when you discovered you had this gift, did you know how you did it? No. Do you still not know how you do it? I'm kind of beginning to understand. Uh, number two, did you ever talk to anyone who was also a ventriloquist who, who could help you? Do you know how you do it? I just woke up and I just can't explain how I do it. I just do it. It's just a gift. Thank you, Kitty. Let's go down to Bill Cullen, please. Uh, number one, I'm interested to know, we, we talked about Sherry Lewis, who's a very fine uh, lady ventriloquist. Are there any other female ventriloquists uh, in addition to Sherry Lewis and yourself, number one? Well, Vonda K. Van Dyke is, and she was a Miss America. And she's a ventriloquist? Yes, she is. Uh, number three, of all the people you've heard, all the ventriloquists who have worked, do you have anyone that's really your ideal or your idol you think is the best of all? I like Sherry Lewis. Uh, I also like Willie Tyler. He's a black ventriloquist uh -huh. with a black puppet. Oh, yeah. Number two, I just want to see how far the generation gap goes. Who is Senior Wences? He was a ventriloquist, and he did very good things. He said yeah. he had hand puppets. He had what? Hand puppets. And uh, he had a fellow in a box, yeah. That's no, all right. We it's go okay. nowhere because a little ding donger went off, and that means that the panel must, without consulting amongst themselves, make up their minds as to whether it's number one or number two or number three. Now, remember, we pay each team $50 for uh, each wrong vote, and we pay them $500 if all the votes are incorrect. And we start with Peggy, please. Well, I voted for number one because, I mean, she imagine having a religious mouth. She couldn't make that up. <laughs> 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 All right, we've got a one, Sean. And uh, Orson is working on another master. Yes, I am. I sent away as a young boy for the marvelous Ventrilo. Oh, Throw yeah. your voice under a bed, in a trunk. Help, help, let me out. <laughs> I always saw a picture of an old peddler being terrified by the voice coming out of the trunk he was carrying 10 cents, and it never worked. <laughs> However, I voted for number two. Where do you put these now? Oh, here, this is so fancy. There you go. We've got a two on a knee. And Kitty. I voted for number three. I think that number three has the look of someone who has performed and is very poised, and, and I wish you luck. All righty. We got all over the joint there. And Bill, you're going to have to cast the majority vote. It's very difficult to determine which one is a ventriloquist. Actually, I sent for the same gadget that Orson sent for, and it didn't work for me either. <laughs> and years before Orson said, I voted for number one. Small world, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> That's the way it goes here. See how it checks out with you. Will the real Linda Phillips please stand up? Here she ah. comes. <laughs> Linda, you, you played that very cozy. She's got a great smile. And she sat there very frozen face throughout the whole it's thing. You know? It's hard. <laughs> it's hard. Let's go to number one and find out about it. What is your name, please, and what do you do? My name is Allison Morgan. I'm a ninth grade student at Trinity School in New York. Thank you, Allison. <laughs> and number two, tell us about yourself. My name is Amy Weinstein, and I'm in the eighth grade in Ryan Junior High School in Queens. Well, Linda, I hope that Sherry Lewis is uh, watching this show because we're going to have you and Pipsqueak, if you don't mind, come out center stage. And uh, this is a, the now version of the puppet that she originally designed, the little mouse. And anytime you're ready, Linda, introduce us to your friend. I want you to meet Pipsqueak. Pipsqueak, say how do you do to your audience? How do you do? <laughs> now, Pipsqueak and I are going to sing a song for you. And the name of it is Super Califragilistic Extiolidocious. Were you ready to sing a song, Pipsqueak? Yeah, okay. A one and a two and a three. Super Califragilistic Extiolidocious. Even though the sound of it is something quite atrocious. If you say it loud enough, you'll only sound cautious. Super Califragilistic 
Brooks, the Alley Doshes. Yum da 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 yum da la, yum da 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 yum da la, yum da 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 yum da la, yum da 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 yum da la. You know you can say it backwards, Pipsqueak, which is Doshes Alley Espiasic Fagicala Rufus. Too far, don't you think? <laughs> Indubitably. So when a cat has got your tongue, there's no need for dismay. Just sunny up the squirt and you've got a lot to say. But better use it carefully or it can change your life. Now let's say hello to a man who creates fireworks. Number one, what is your name, please? My name is Barry Rothman. Number two. My name is Barry Rothman. Number three. My name is Barry Rothman. And here is the sparkling story of Barry Rothman. It goes like this. I, Barry Rothman, am the country's only freelance fireworks designer. All my radically new fireworks devices are handmade. They include everything from sky-catching displays for lawn parties and bar mitzvahs up to a 30-minute pyrotechnic outpouring for a major beer company. Watch carefully as we now look at some of my more flamboyant fireworks. Here we see a chrysanthemum shell, followed by artillery with multiple timed reports. That's a chrysanthemum. And here comes a peony. And two more chrysanthemums. Some multiple peonies. Oh, boy. And here is a 300-yard diameter chrysanthemum. Mm. A comet shell. Wow. These are wrigglers. I like those. And this is a combination of chrysanthemums and peonies. Oh. And finally, a fireworks farrago for the faithful to tell the truth fans. Watch this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're burning it up. That's great. And his statement continues to say, yes, I've come a long way from the day when, experimenting in my high school science laboratory, I blew out all the windows. <laughs> Signed, Barry Rothman. <laughs> Uh, be the first kid on your block to be the only kid on your block. Let's go to Orson Bean. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. But to me, any fireworks display is not a fireworks display if it doesn't end with a red, white, and blue portrait of President Roosevelt. <laughs> That's what I grew up with, and it's never been the same since. Uh, number one, in what states is it still legal to sell fireworks direct to the public? Oh, uh, well, about... Uh, 35 states, they're still legal to some degree. Is, uh, to some degree, yeah. Well, uh, number three, uh, in a lot of states, the public is not supposed to be able to buy more than sparklers or something direct. Isn't that true, number three? Uh, well, in, in most states uh, that forbid fireworks, not even sparklers. Not even sparklers? Yeah. I guess I smuggled a few in from North Carolina or something. <laughs> number two, uh, do you mostly sell to groups now or to municipalities or what, what, what is the big market now? Well, usually it's an independent person, for example, like the beer company or uh, a stadium yeah. wants an event or something like that. It's, it's not a... Thank you, Orson. Let's go to Kitty. Thank you. Number one, is it legal to buy fireworks in New York State? No. Uh, number two, how do you stack those uh, extraordinary displays that you showed us? I mean, let's say something is in a, in a rocket, right? Uh, uh, Gunpowder, well, what do you use? Well, gunpowder is the basic ingredient to any uh, fireworks of, of any type, but uh, we use uh, mortar shells. Uh, it's done in a mortar, shot from a mortar, really. Thank you. And uh, things are stacked 
we keep them separate so that uh, if anything uh, explodes, it wouldn't blow up the rest of them and cause an accident of any kind. Thank you. Number two, but how do you get the, the configuration of, of, the, of the final show? I mean, in other words, when, when the rocket explodes and you get the petals coming out and then something else happens, is this stacked separately in the mortar shell? Did you want two or three? Three, I'm sorry. Uh, well, there are, are secondary explosive charges in the, in the uh, shot that goes up. I see. Number one. And down to Bill Collin, please. I'm intrigued with number two, who said they use mortar shells. Now, they, the mortar shells are metal. Uh, do you use metal shells to propel the, the subsequent explosives into the air, number two? No, that's... Uh, uh, I, the mortar is what you use. The, uh, the mortar casing is what's used. The shell itself is not metal because when it explodes, of course, you don't want any injuries. So it's basically a very hard cardboard that's layered uh, to make the shell itself. Uh, number one, in other words, what you do is put, you fire off an original carrier, like, uh, which goes up into the air, and then from that, from an explosion, other particular displays come out of that case. Is that right, number one? That's correct. Number one, staying with you, uh, which country, well, well, let's just say it, is China still the leader as far as manufacturing uh, fireworks and pyrotechnic displays? Generally, yes. It, are you permitted to import things from uh, from China, for instance, number one, for yes. your displays? <coughs> it is permitted. Yeah. Uh, and Peggy's been trying to suppress the cough. Yeah. I want to take a drink of water, Peggy? No, that's what made me stronger. cough. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> number three, uh, you did a 30-minute display for a beer company. But what did you do? Do giant mug steins of beer with heads or what? Oh, yes, all sorts of uh, uh, rather spectacular... Uh, displays. But I mean, were they mostly related to beer? I mean... Well, it was the name. I won't mention the, the beer company, but it was the name of the company, and then there were steins of beer, and there were uh, dancing girls, all sorts of things. I truly would have enjoyed that. Uh, was it for the 4th of July? No, it was for an anniversary of, of the uh, company uh -huh. opening a park. Now, number one, do I, would I, if I wanted to buy a multiple chrysanthemum, would I have to get a license from the city to shoot it off, or could I just go out on Third Avenue and let it rip? <laughs> <laughs> uh, other things rip on Third Avenue, but you would, uh, you would need a license from one agency or another. Thank you. I don't know what you need, but when you do it, call me. I, I won't be there. Right now, it is time for the panel to mark their ballots and decide what they think. Is it number one, or is it number two, or is it number three? And Orson, if you have come to a decision, we'd like I to know indeed. about it. I believe it's number one. He, uh, he really looks like a pro to me, and he can't. That snappy comeback at the end <laughs> cinched the deal. <laughs> you got a high flying one there in Kitty Carlisle. Well, I think it's number one. He looks like a businessman, and I think he told the truth about uh, China. All right, you got a pair of ones showing, and we're going to go down there to Bill Cullen. I voted for number one because I never knew that other things ripped on Third Avenue. So <laughs> this minute, number one. Peggy, are you going to make this unanimous? Oh, gee. I, you know, I have a funny feeling it's not number one, but uh -oh. I voted for him anyway. It's unanimous. 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 Funny, from sitting over here, I try to second-guess the panel. I would never have guessed a unanimous vote on this one, but that's the way it went. Well, the real, Barry Rothman, please stand up. Oh, we got ah! it. Ah! <laughs> Come in. Sorry about that, guys. Number two, tell us about yourself. My name is Joe Prusan, and I'm a manufacturer of ladies' dresses under the firm name of Kloss Prusan. Oh, good to have you here. <laughs> and number three, tell us about you. My name is George Fields. I'm a musician and a music teacher. If, if somebody wants to commission you to do a fireworks show for a special occasion, what, how do they get hold of you? Send us um, some mail. Easily and directly by either writing or calling Nationwide Fireworks Corporation in Saginaw, Michigan. Just that simple, huh? Yes, that easy. And can an individual call you up, let's say, on a, if he's having an anniversary, a 25th anniversary, and decide he wants a firework display? Can you design something incorporating perhaps his wife's name or a portrait of his wife or something like that? That's our specialty. Oh, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Anything from funerals to bar mitzvahs. Funerals? Funerals? <laughs> <laughs> That's another thing I want to go to. I want to go to uh, over there on 3rd Avenue. The next time you have a funeral where you have one of those things, I'm going to go. 
And thank you very much, Mr. Rothman. Thank you, gentlemen, for being with us. Gee, uh, talking about fireworks really took me back to my childhood in Baltimore. And my, my father would never let us kids uh, light the fireworks. He would buy all the fireworks and he'd light them. I was on the 4th of July, and on the 5th, 6th, and 7th, he had bandages <laughs> on his elbows. He burned himself. What were those little things that you lit? They were shaped sort of triangularly. And then you lit the top of them, and punk would come out. Oh, snakes. No, snakes. Oh, snakes. snakes, snakes, snakes. Yeah, yeah. they would keep yeah. growing on them. Gray them. snakes. And they make terrible spots yeah. on the sidewalk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I like three-inch salutes in a tin can. Yes. Oh yeah, that made a great Boom. noise. Yeah. Yes. There was a Mrs. Prism who lived across the street from us. She used to get mad every. Well, I could go on. Every. <laughs> we were so poor that all we could afford was punk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just carried on. Well, punk. friends, on this jolly note, happy Fourth of July, and <laughs> whatever, and we'll see you again. <laughs> This is Bill Wendell speaking for To Tell the Truth on Mark Goodson, Bill Tuckman Productions.